War sucks. Trust me, I know. And it's definitely not something to glorify. It's an undeniable scar on humanity, a harsh reality that brings destruction and pain. Yet, from the crucible of conflict, emerge stories of extraordinary bravery, resilience, and heroism. These stories, and the people within them, often become the stuff of legend. Among these legends is the Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, Studies and Observations Group, or MACVSOG for short, a highly classified, multi-service United States Special Operations Unit. This elite unit operated in the shadows during the Vietnam War, conducting unconventional and covert operations that required nerves of steel and unyielding determination. The men of MACVSOG, often referred to as just SOG, relied on their equipment as much as they relied on their courage. The story of how SOG operatives came to favor Seiko watches over the standard issue military timepieces is rooted in the very nature of their covert missions. Being tasked with some of the most secretive and dangerous operations deep behind enemy lines, they needed not only exceptional skill and bravery, but also gear that wouldn't give away their presence. The standard issue watches provided by the US military were reliable, but they were also easily recognizable. This was a problem for operatives who needed to blend in and avoid drawing attention. Opting to wear Seiko watches, on the other hand, offered the perfect solution. The civilian timepieces, purchased in local markets, look like the watches worn by ordinary people of the region, helping operatives stay undercover. Today, if you could find one of these watches in good shape, it would probably cost you well over a thousand bucks. And that's for a nearly 60 years old watch that isn't as robust as a modern watch. Enter the Presidus Rex Spec, an American assembled watch that pays tribute to both the men of Mac Visog and the Seikos they used as they provided valuable intel behind enemy lines. This watch was sent to me from the company on loan for review, and I will be sending it back once I'm done with it. The Rex Spec, short for Reconnaissance Spec, has a few different dial and strap combinations you can opt for. It costs 295 US dollars on leather, canvas, or tropic rubber straps, and the Beads of Rice bracelet is also available for an extra 60 bucks. The watch we are looking at today is the OG Sunray on a sand distressed leather strap. I asked Presidus to send this specific variation as it bears the most resemblance to the original watch worn by the SOG back in the day. Here's the familiar Presidus watch box. I love how they use the same type of box every time, yet still manage to make it special and on theme with the watch inside. This time it's a jungle themed box. Here's everything you can expect to get with your Presidus watch. Coming in with a nice set of dimensions, the rec spec is slightly larger than the OG Seiko it homages. The width of the case is 38 mm. It is 12 mm thick including the protrusion of the crystal, has 20 mm of lug width and a lug to lug distance of just under 45 mm. It weighs 61 grams on the leather strap and is water resistant to 5 atmospheres. The dial is very much 60s Seiko. A nice grey dial with a nice sunburst effect, a simple mini track printed in white along the very edge of the dial, slanted Arabic numerals made up of thickly applied green tone luminescent material, the brand's name under the 12 o'clock marker, the model's name and the movement's jewel count above the 6, United States assembly on both sides of the 6, and a day and date window at the 3 o'clock position. Very retro and very nicely done. Now you know I'm not a big fan of date complications in general, let alone day and date complications, but here I really like the applied metal frame with an almost frosted finish and the black and white discs Presidus decide to use for the day and date. The rack spec is equipped with faceted and highly polished baton style hour and minute hands with some loom on their centers. Also present is a needle seconds hand with a little leaf shaped counterbalance. Another very cool little detail. The loom is listed as Super Luminova, though they don't state which specific type. 
In any case, it shines in a bright green glow and is pretty good for this type of watch. Being this type of watch, you don't really expect it to shine for a whole lot of time. And indeed, while it is very bright initially, it will fade out within half an hour or so. Covering the dial is a box domed, sapphire coated K1 mineral crystal with blue tinted anti reflective coating. This is something we've seen from this brand before. They take beautifully shaped K1 crystals and add a coat of sapphire to ensure they won't scratch. I'm not sure why they don't just use sapphire crystal, but this combination is supposed to be the next best thing, and it won't scratch easily. The case is made of 316L stainless steel and features both brushed and highly polished surfaces on multiple facets. The upper sides of the lugs and the sides of the case are brushed, as well as the sides of the fixed bezel. The beveled part of the bezel is polished, and so are the chamfered edges of the case itself. My favorite detail about the finishing of the rack spec is the brushing done to the flat top of the bezel. A very small push-pull crown is tucked away at the 4 o'clock position just like it was on the Seikos worn by SOG operatives. It works well as a historical detail, but not as much as a functional crown you can actually use. It is very hard to operate, especially when you need to wind the movement. The case back snaps onto place and features a bead blasted finish. It's not as fancy as some other Presidus case backs we've seen before, with only the things the brand found important to emphasize engraved on it, including Mac V SOG field watch, and assembled in the USA. The rec spec is a Seiko tribute, powered by Seiko movement. This is the NH36, the day and date variant of the trusty NH family of automatic movements. As such, it shares the same specs as the other variants, 24 joules, 21,600 bits per hour, hacking and hand winding, Diashock shock protection system, Smooth 6 ticks per second sweep of the seconds hand, minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day on the accuracy front, and 40 hours of power reserve. Presidus sent me the watch on an Italian leather strap. Like all Presidus leather straps I've seen so far, this one too is of very good quality. It features a distressed textured top, fine stitching, branded leather bottom, quick release spring bars for quick and easy strap change, and a really nice stainless steel buckle. Brushed, polished, and signed. There's one more thing about the strap I want to point out, and I'll do that with the watch on my wrist. And here it is on my 7 inch wrist. This feels very much like wearing a vintage Seiko. It conforms beautifully to the wrist, and I think it just looks great. Legibility is not amazing. The rack spec is not as legible as a classic field watch, but just as legible as, well, a Seiko 5 dressy sports watch. And I don't really see an issue with that. That is what it is supposed to be. That's its story. As for the strap, and that one more thing I wanted to mention, the strap is actually very comfortable, and it visually fits the watch very well. If I flip my wrist around, You'll see that I have 7 holes to spare if I wanted the strap to fit a bigger wrist, but only one hole if I wanted a smaller fit. That is a weird choice by Presidus, especially on a 38mm watch that would be great for smaller wrists too. Luckily, it looks just as great on different straps too. Here are a couple of options for your consideration, including Presidus' own bone clip style bracelet that I took off my PEC 76. Let's talk about the pros and cons then, pros first. First and foremost, the story behind this watch is its main selling point in my opinion. With Presidus, it's always about the story behind the watch as much as it is about the watch itself. They have a way of telling stories through their watches and that is something I've always appreciated. The man of Mac Visog should have been put in the spotlight through this timepiece and even though war does suck, Heroes deserve to be honored. Besides that, the Rex Pack is a very nice watch. It is powered by a powerhouse automatic movement, has a wicked sunburst dial, beautiful crystal, and it just looks great on wrist. Once again, Presidus found good balance between vintage looks 
and modern craftsmanship. The Rex Pack is a fine alternative for those looking for a vintage Seiko without the hassle of owning a worn and torn vintage Seiko. The attention to details is impressive. I always look for those one or more details that show me that the designers of a watch, especially one that is a modern take on a legendary back catalog watch, understood the essence of the watch. On this watch for me, it is the tip of the second hand and the font they used for the text on the dial. Both just scream vintage, without it being too obvious. And while I'm usually on team no date, I actually really like the way they chose to implement the day date function on the rec spec. That surrounding metal frame and those black and white day and date discs do add interest to the dial. But of course, no watch is perfect. So let's discuss some of the cons. First of all, the K1 sapphire coated mineral crystal is durable, but I would have preferred true sapphire for better scratch resistance. Next is the miniature crown. Again, it's hard to operate. Almost impossible really. While it does maintain historical accuracy, it sacrifices some modern comfort, which can be frustrating. Also, the strap won't fit smaller wrists. This can be a deal breaker for those with smaller wrist sizes. Other than the number of holes it has on it, the leather strap really is a very nice one. And then we get to the price. Sure, the Rex Pack is an affordable alternative to the OG Mac Visog Seikos. But at almost $300, it faces fierce competition from other brands that offer the same specs for less money. I would argue that it's not all about the specs though, and not many of the competitors offer the same historical connection. So whether it's worth it or not, is totally up to you. Let me know what you guys think about this modern reincarnation of the Seiko Mac V SOG in the comments below. You'll find a link to the watch in the description of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my affordable watch collection and hit the notification bell for more affordable watches related content. Here are a couple of quick links to my reviews of two more military inspired Presidus watches. Check these out next. I want to thank Presidus for sending me yet another watch for review and to thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.